Hi guys, not every no is a rejection. Every rejection is not a no. I don't know if that makes sense. But here's the thing. The positive side of growing up, I know people say growing up is a lot of responsibility, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. Well, not exactly a bad thing, but a heavy thing that you experience and perceive things differently. And I've realized over time that sometimes people interpret a no as a rejection when it's really not. Not every no is a rejection. Not every being cast out is a rejection. You remember like uh, the people, uh, in the word of God there is a story about lepers. These lepers who were cast out because of what they were going through, what their bodies were going through. And they were going hungry where they had been cast out. They took up courage to go back into the city. Is it either the city or to where the people were? Because they figured if we stay here, we are going to die. If we go there, we are going to die. So there's nothing to lose. And when they went there, they found resources that they wouldn't have necessarily gotten if they had stayed where they were. Moral of the story is this. You can have an experience of a rejection, but the rejection only works if you accept it. If you, you accept that you are deformed and deserving of that rejection. If you take up that rejection as a stopping point, that's what it will be. If you take it as a challenge to move on, to get to the next place, to get to what God has made for you, then it becomes a motivation. Nos are turning points. Look at it like you're on a highway. On, and this highway has intersections. I don't know much about roads, but According to the little knowledge I have, follow me. Follow like my point, not the logical aspect of how roads work. Because I know you're smart people, right? Don't come for me because of, you know, don't allow your smartness to overtake my point. <laughs> On a highway, right? And there are landmarks, there are not landmarks, there are directions, there are speed limits to how fast or how slow you're supposed to go on this highway. There are intersections. By intersections, I mean places you have to cross because if you don't, you will have to go then back all the way, you know, those types of things. So every no is like that. Every no will lead you somewhere. Every no is a turning point. Every rejection per se is a plot twist. Someone can say no. Okay, let me give you an example of my life. I'm the type of person who always had my life figured out. And by figured out, I mean, I always knew how I wanted my life to look like at the end of the road. Not so much the details. Well, not precise details about how I was, I was going to get there. I knew I had to work hard. I knew there were things I couldn't do that I would need to make up for. And over time, I've realized that God has a funny way of planning out your life. You think you're going on the left side and God has a whole plan on the right side. The intersection, the turning point where you get from your plan to God's plan, it involves a lot of noise. It involves a lot of casting away. See, I mean things that you cannot control, things that are out of your control, things that you cannot change about yourself or your life to get you to where you want to go and funny thing about this is you can be stuck in that place where you're supposed to turn but you're stuck in that place where you're like no i'm supposed to go left i don't want to turn right right and you can be stuck there for so long you can be disappointed in that place frustrated 
relationships you know a lot of your relationships can change because of that change you know that requirement of you turning from your plan to god's plan and sometimes it's not great sometimes it doesn't feel like a relief it doesn't feel like an elevation to something greater sometimes it just feels like a falling you know a falling into an into an endless pit right an endless dark pit and here's the thing i've realized for a long time because i had a plan for myself i thought that if my plan wasn't working it was probably because it was a failure which wasn't true the truth is that god was you know sculpturing is it called sculpturing molding my life into something else something that i had not thought for for myself and something that i did not think maybe subconsciously that i was deserving of because and i think sometimes we downplay ourselves because we think that life is dependent on whether we think we are deserving or not deserving of something but the truth is god doesn't care whether you think you're deserving or not deserving if god thinks that this is something that he trusts you with whether you believe it of yourself or not whether anyone believes it of you or not is going to go with it is going to run with it <laughs> i just pictured god running so that's why i'm smiling but yeah so i've realized that maybe rejections are the best things to happen to us because it's like a surprise it's like rejection is like a parcel it's how your purpose is parcel sometimes it doesn't look like what is inside and you look at it and you're so heartbroken you're so discouraged because it doesn't look like what you want from outside but then you get to unwrap it and it's like wow like this is even better than what i thought of for myself this is better than how i would have planned it for myself and i do realize that for some people it takes long to get to that place because sometimes there are times when god needs to mold you to sculpture you so that when you get to that place you don't drown into the weight of the responsibility of that new level and sometimes god just gives it to you because you're ready and i think that um like for me personally i've lived feeling like i had to fight fight for everything like i had to prove that i was worth an opportunity that i was worth either a relationship a friendship a situation that i was worth who i was and it that became a burden for me and i know even if somehow uh, maybe that was part of the plan maybe that is how i've become who i am today and i'm heading to who whoever god has made of me it still did not click for me until recently and i and i'm not saying like because i have this knowledge now this wisdom now that i'm happy when pain happens and that i'm happy when uh tough times happen because i understand that god has a better plan than what i have for myself obviously i'm a human being obviously there are times i take for granted my pain i take for granted the places i'm positioned because it doesn't look like what i want you know like let's say like for example youtube when i started off youtube i had this picture because i felt it was of god from god that it would look a certain way it would be easy and funnily enough it has taken it takes a lot of i do enjoy it and the truth is even if i take a break from from it i still have this urge of creating i still have this urge of putting uh airing out what god has placed in my heart or creating something and there are times when i have taken so much time maybe a day or a week to create something that hasn't gone the way i wanted to because that's how much i feel driven to come onto this platform and with that said it does not sometimes it does not bear fruit according to my human perception of how i want it to be fruitful but the truth is over time i've come to realize that it's really working the way god wants it to work and it's really 
not just impacting the people outside but it's more so me and i can look at myself and think you know in this stage of life this is how i thought this is the things i tolerated that i shouldn't have tolerated these are the things that i did that i shouldn't it brings light into situations where i choose less for myself because that's what i'm used to that's how i justify my weaknesses right and you i realized over time that even my weaknesses right now they have been placed to light because i cannot come on here and speak about something that i've not experienced or something i don't believe in then go and do something else in real life you know after the the platform is like after the video is off right so that forces me to mature even in my weaknesses even my in my weak points like i said like in my q a recently about a weak point i was having a weak moment and i went back to a situation where you know i reached out to someone i shouldn't have right and it made me realize it's okay to sleep up but it's not okay to sleep to keep doing the same thing over and over again and explain it as a moment of weakness because that's not growth if you're evolving you're supposed to grow from what the way you used to react the way you used to cope with things you're supposed to evolve in a way that you know how to adapt or you know who the right person to reach out to is and you know it's not like from a human perspective we all know that not everyone no matter how much people care and love you not everyone will be able to meet your needs the way god does meet your needs which is the right thing actually god is the only person who is supposed to meet all your needs exactly the way he sees it fits to meet them right so the going back to rejection rejection we shouldn't take rejection as a negative thing when you're younger i get it it's you haven't experienced enough or you know there are people who experience much more divine experiences that help them realize that you know what every no every rejection is a step up to a higher state but i feel like when you're older it's more likely that you do understand this thing when you're younger it's like 50 50 there are people who get it there are people who don't and it's not because they're not wise or stuff like that it's just that the grace that some people have been given is different from the grace other people have been given and another thing about rejection and about knows that i've learned is that for every rejection you get for every no you get for every uh you don't fit in you know you get it makes you compassionate it makes you understanding of other people and the places where they're at the situations they are going through there are things that you've gone through that gives you an understanding that no one else can like for example if you have been uh deprived of a meal it's easy for you to be you know it's not easy for you to hide food from people you will place it on the table even when they say they are full you you will place it on the table let them decide for themselves because you understand that sometimes people cover up pain sometimes people cover up lack and also if you have been wealthy and you have lacked food it's not easy for anyone to understand such such a situation but if you've gone through it it's easy for you to understand another rich guy wealthy guy who comes to you and says you know what i'm in a bad situation and i don't have food and it's easy for you to feed them without judgment because you also have gone through that place but for people who have not it's very hard for someone who is poor to look at a wealthy person and think they can lack food you know or they can never lack anything in life because they assume that they always have something they always have more than enough because that's the perception that they have from outside you get i don't know if this is understandable but so yeah basically what i'm trying to say is rejection is a gift nose are a gift they are plot they are pooey. They are plot twists. They are turns. They are, you know, are leading into another direction. Are leading in onto another highway. Are leading onto 
higher purpose are leading into deeper humility and like i said before please don't confuse humility and suppression because there are people who explain humility as um you know like there are people who oppress people and they think that it's hum humble of them to accept the oppression please understand humility is not oppression they do not correlate humility is when you understand that what you are given is a blessing that what the positions you have their blessings the authority you have is a power to protect people it's a gift to protect god's people and by god's people i don't mean born again christians i mean every human being that god cares about every animal that god cares about every environment space that god cares about you to take up that responsibility because you feel privileged to be where you are right so yeah i think for me the thing i wish that i learned earlier is that rejection isn't really rejection it's a redirection it's a gift it's a plan it's a different plan it's a plot twist it's a another highway and elevation to being better having better in life another thing i also want to say concerning rejection and nose is this i want you to understand that this is the thing that i've come to see in life truly in my life is that if god sends someone to help you or if god sends you to help someone and you do not do it please do not misunderstand me but here's the reality your no does not stop god from blessing the person he sent you to bless he will use easily anyone else to do what he sent you to do like that so and it's like this the Uh, there is this story about Elijah is it Elijah the about the widow who had a little oil and i think a little flour and that's all she had and Elijah was sent and the word of god says that there were many widows in his land but he was sent to a foreign land to this particular woman and this particular woman is the person who did what god allowed her gave her the opportunity to do and she used that opportunity to bless god the man of god the prophet of god and that opened a door for her to have a business you know the because the oil kept right was it the oil the sons brought in jars right i can't remember the story but the sons brought in jars and it kept filling in for you know for as long as she had empty jars So the moral of the story is this if God sends you to someone and you do not do what God sent you to do God will take up someone else what does that teach you be humble enough to do what you are sent what you are called what you are drawn to do for God for a higher purpose and for the person who is on the other side where they feel like they have they have had to say no to an opportunity because it compromised their faith it compromised their humanity it compromised the grace the purpose that god has given them please never feel like it's the end of the road everything in life happens for a reason and if you're doing your part if you're right with god everything will align you may seem like you're losing but at, at some point in life something will take a turn and you will realize that God doesn't forget God doesn't leave things to chance right so don't fear to stand up for yourself because you feel like if you lose something it will never come back to you even if that's how we have been driven to believe that opportunities don't come around the only time opportunities don't come around again is if you have been given a chance by God and you take it for granted you neglect it you don't maintain it you don't sacrifice for it you don't put into it what you're supposed to put into it but if you're doing your part everything works out everything works out but please don't feel like you need to be oppressed to do something for someone or to get an op- op- an opportunity you have been created special you have been created worthy and full of value and if you believe it and if you take chances you know if you raise your faith if you change your mindset and think better and greater you're going to get there whether anyone supports you or not because god has a way you know here's the thing i truly believe with all my heart if every human being refuses to help you out in the way 
in the direction you're supposed to go. And that is what God has called them to do. God will bring out angels. If the angels refuse, God will send out the devil. And if the devil refuses, God will come himself. That's just the way I believe about life. Like no one can stop you from getting to where you're going. And I know right now, you know, to test this theory, I know right now, like, when I look at, when I started off this YouTube channel, I don't know if I've said this before, I did not think that I would even have 10 subscribers, to be honest. I thought that maybe it would be just me and maybe my mother. <laughs> but the crazy thing is that even before I forwarded it uh, to my lovely mother, I had all these people that I, some I can put a face to as strangers and most of them I cannot. I cannot put a face to the numbers, but I know there are people out there who listen to me and who value what I say, who value the calling God has put in me. And the crazy thing is that even adults listen to me. And it's funny how people come up to you and they speak to you, how people who are familiar with you call you when you're slacking or when you're off and they push you and they believe so much in that vision that even when you yourself don't, they do. And yeah, so I want to say that don't allow rejection to stop you. Don't allow a no to stop you. Look at it as a redirection. And also another thing, it's okay to be different. Actually, it's your calling. It's a calling for all of us to be different. You are not supposed to be like everyone else. You are not supposed to walk and talk like everyone else. You are not supposed to, you know, hang around the same groups, you know, to feel like we fit in. We are supposed to be different. You are supposed to contradict. We are supposed to bring to the table something that makes people uncomfortable, uncomfortable enough to elevate, right? And I know that because of how our society has been, you know, conditioned that if you're different, you're supposed to be rejected, you're supposed to be cast away, people tend to fear and they start coping everything everyone else is doing. And you end up getting lost in that mix. And your uniqueness gets lost in that space. But honestly, I find beauty in people who are different, right? People who defy the odds, people who walk and talk.